Hello, welcome to Wood Fired Weekly with Manor from Devon. Today we're going to be doing a little technical video and uh, we're going to be talking about lighting the fires. And we're going to do this in the Alpha, so a classic uh, stainless steel type oven. We're also going to be firing up a Morso, Danish cast iron, and we're going to be using the Bushman, the traditional refractory oven. And they're all slightly different in how we need to fire those ovens. So the, the Alpha, first of all, uh, many different varieties of, of these ovens out there. Stainless steel insulation around the top, refractory base uh, in the bottom, that's all. And it doesn't take a lot of heat to get this oven up to, up to speed and ready to cook. So we haven't got a massive amount of wood to go in in here. All of my wood arrives like this, big old chunks, axe comes out, everything gets split down. That's the same pretty much for all of the ovens. Slightly bigger in the refractory oven, but really little bits of wood which will burn quickly, give us lots of heat, not something which is gonna sit on the fire and smolder away quietly and take a long time to, to give us heat. In the Alpha, which heats up really quickly with a very small amount of wood, that's my first amount of wood to fire it up. The really important thing is that this wood is really, really dry. If I try and burn wet wood, I'm going to get lots of steam, I'm going to get lots of hissing, get lots and lots of smoke and not get very much heat. So it's not going to work in my favour. So make sure your wood is really nice and dry. Definitely below 20%, but today we're using kiln dried wood and this is coming out at around about 5% moisture content. So this is going to burn really quickly and give me lots of very quick heat. So this little Jenga stack straight into the oven. I'm going to start it off in the center, get some heat into the floor. One little fire lighter. And that's it. And that, I think that little amount of wood there will probably get me up to cooking temperature in the Alpha oven. What I have found with this oven is that I get a little bit of smoke leaking out of the front here. I could try and extend the flue and see if I get a little bit more, more draw. But what I found quite useful is just to use the door like that. Still gets plenty of oxygen drawing in there, so I haven't reduced the amount of oxygen that the fire is getting. But uh, there's a little bit more of a buffer here to stop the smoke coming out of the, the front. Whenever you're firing the oven, you need a lot of oxygen for the fire. So don't put the door on, but in this case, we're just using it as a little buffer. Our Alpha's only been burning for about five minutes and already we're up at 200 degrees centigrade inside the oven. If we have a look, we halfway burnt through our little stack of wood there. Got lots and lots of, uh, of heat. And what I'm gonna do now is just push that off to to one side and I use this little retainer quite a lot. Because if I'm cooking somewhere just here, I don't get uh, immediate uh, direct heat from the fire. I just get the heat going over the top and circulating, which gives me a bit more of an even temperature in the oven. So that's the Alpha up and running. I'll keep that door on, it doesn't hinder the oxygen at all. So we'll leave that one and we're going to go in and light the more so oven. We're now moving on to the more so oven. When we're firing this up, we've got no problem with oxygen. It's got an enormous door on it, so we can make the fire right in the center of the oven. We're starting with the same Jenga stack of dry firewood, birch in this case, but a little bit more than we used in the Alpha. There's no insulation on the more so oven. Cast iron. It does have a refractory floor, so we're gonna make the fire in the center of the oven, let it burn all over the floor, get a lot of heat into that floor, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of, of burn, uh, and then we'll start cooking. Depending on the wind direction, the more so may smoke a little bit. Today we've got a nice windless day, so we're not gonna have too much of a problem. But if I did have a little bit of wind causing interference, first of all, I try and turn the back of the oven to the wind as much as possible. That's not always possible, but as much as possible. And because it's got such a big opening, 
It's not a problem if I set the door something like that because that can then deflect the wind and give me a better burn behind it. Once we've got the floor nicely heated up, I'll move the fire away to the side to, to cook. And in this oven, we'll pretty much have a small fire burning all the time to keep the temperature up. So you can see that's already burning quite nicely. No problem with wind today. So that's nicely up and running and we're gonna go and light the Bushman oven. So we're now on to lighting the Bushman oven. And this is a little bit more of a beast and a little bit more technical. What we have to remember about the Bushman oven or any kind of refractory oven. So any oven where it's got a big old lump of refractory concrete or clay or brick around it is that we need to preheat the oven. And once we have preheated the oven, the oven itself becomes your primary source of, of heat. So we could think about this almost as like charging up our battery. Once the battery is charged, we can start running our appliances, our applications, whatever it might be off it. But that becomes the primary source of heat and thereafter then the, the, the fire itself in the oven is the secondary source of, of heat. So we're really gonna make a big old fire in the oven. And I've got same Jenga stack that we used before, but now really a little bit, a little bit more going on. We're gonna slide that whole thing into the oven. but not too far in. This needs to get some oxygen to start with. And if we push it too far into the oven, this is a deep oven, we just smother the, the fire with, with smoke. And then we'll struggle to keep it going. So we're gonna start it in there. Once it's burning and it's set up its own air circulation and the air is flowing, we can push it back into the middle of the oven. And in these ovens, air circulation is, is vital. If the air is, is not circulating, we'll find it very difficult to keep the fire going. Uh, we'll be forever sort of blowing in there with a, with a pipe. And that's really down to the shape of the oven and the flue drawing nicely. So a badly designed oven or a badly installed oven won't work very well. We'll find it very difficult to uh, light the fire and we may find smoke coming out of the front, filling up the room. That's no good at all. So we're gonna give that four or five minutes Make sure we've got a nice bright flame burning. Make sure we've established that airflow. Then we can push it right back into the center of the oven. When it's in the center of the oven, flame is going up, hitting the roof. Energy is going into the dome of the oven, not coming out of the door, not going up the flue. Super efficient. Uh, we're making best, best possible use of our fuel. Because I've built this nice Jenga stack now, it's a very simple job to push my fire back into the center of the oven. Put my little supports back in place so that the fire doesn't, doesn't collapse and spread too quickly. So I've now got the fire burning in the center of the oven, heating the floor, and the flames hitting the top of the dome, heating the dome, and the heat will spread evenly around the oven. And we'll find that this oven will take about 45 minutes before we're ready to cook. Initially, the whole of the dome is gonna be coated with carbon, soot, and then after about 45 minutes, we'll find that all of that has been burnt off because the inside of the dome is all heated up somewhere above 350 degrees. We then know we've got a nice stable oven and we can start cooking with it and we'll have no problems at all. Before that, the heat will just be a bit fluky. We can, of course, cook. We've got heat, we can cook, but it's just going to be a little bit fluky and if the fire dies, the heat will, will go. So we keep a nice bright fire burning in there. Could get up as much as 750 degrees. And we can clearly see just along this line here where we've got smoke above the line and no smoke below. Because we've got cold air being drawn in, heated up in the, in the, in the fire, and then hot air sitting in the top of the, the dome. And there's a clear line between the two because we've got this nice air circulation. No air spilling out of the front. So that smoke sitting in the top is sort of fighting its way downhill a little bit and then heading up the, the flue. Not a lot of heat comes out the front, so I can hold my hand there pretty comfortably. But if I try and put my hand in there, well, we, we've got sort of six or 700 degrees of fire in there, so I'm not gonna get close to it, but it's not spilling heat here. And that tells me that this oven is working fantastically efficiently. No smoke, comfortable environment to work in, really efficient use of fuel. 
So that's a little bit about how to fire up ovens. I hope you found that useful. Thank you for joining us on Wood Fired Weekly. We'll be back next week with another video, maybe a recipe next time. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. Uh, we'll write some details about firing your oven down below. And if you've got any comments or further questions, uh, please make a comment. Thanks for joining us.